Welcome back to Jewels of the Trade. Today we're going to talk about what is jade? What is nephrite? What is jadeite? Why does it matter? Today all of your questions will be answered. There are a lot of gemstones that are called jade on the market, but there are only two that are considered jade gemologically, jadeite and nephrite. Let's start with nephrite. Nephrite is the jade of ancient China. We actually did a full video on this, which we'll link below. Nephrite jade is as old as China's recorded history, having been found in the form of weapons, relics, and more inside of ancient tombs. There's no evidence saying that nephrite jade was ever actually mined in China. So going back 5,000 years, it's a little tricky trying to say where it may have come from. Today it mostly comes from Canada, China, and Russia, as well as the US, Australia, New Zealand, Europe, and Africa. It's also the toughest gemstone in the world, which is why it was made into tools and weapons in ancient China. It's, I guess, actually the second toughest if you consider hematite the first. It's actually sort of debated. The Chinese attitude toward nephrite jade was never worshipped, always revered. There really is no other gemstone in all of history that played as important of a role in culture, religion, and status as nephrite jade did in ancient China. You tend to see nephrite in inexpensive jewelry, but it can be fairly valuable in high qualities. A nice nephrite bangle can even go for $5,000 or so. It's not unheard of, but it's not terribly common either. A lot of nephrite pieces you can pick up at different jewelry stores for $100 or $200 or less, depending on what the item is. The appearance of nephrite is never going to quite compare to excellent quality jadeite because nephrite doesn't have the translucency that jadeite has that gives it that apparent glow. Jadeite, with its translucency, has this glowy, gummy, delicious look to it that makes you just want to bite into it. And it's really quite unusual and is part of why jadeite is so highly valued. I have never wanted to eat jadeite and I love it. <laughs> just want to touch it. Next we're moving on to jadeite, which is more of a jewelry topic as nephrite jade is often highly valued in carvings and sculptures of ancient China. Jadeite is typically the jade that you'll see more in jewelry, particularly higher end, higher quality jewelry. Jadeite is relatively new to the market as far as China is concerned as they didn't know about it until the 1700s. China opened up trade with Burma in 1784, and the vivid green jadeite made its way into the hands of the Emperor Qianlong, who would become obsessed with this stone that they called Fei Choi, meaning kingfisher jade, distinguished from the nephrite jade of ancient China that the Chinese referred to as Yu. Me? No, you. It's not Fei Kui. I don't know what it is. I don't know, I read Choi. I read Choi somewhere and so we're going with that. The emperor noticed that Fei Choi looked similar, yet more desirable than the traditional Yu. Enticing? He was certainly enticed. Oh my gosh, he was like crazy obsessed. Imperial Jade, and by that I mean the actual jade that belonged to Chinese nobility, started to hit the American market late 19th, early 20th century after it was, well, stolen from the palace of the Dowager Empress Sisi. This was when a lot of Chinese art and pottery hit the Western market as well. As far as I know, the first jewelry store in the United States to carry jadeite from China was actually Tiffany and Company. Well, it wasn't, uh, what's his name? In, uh, San Francisco? Gump? Yeah. He wasn't the first, but he was he was the one that made it like a really big deal because Gump was the one who would like go to China to buy it and then bring it back and sell it in San Francisco. That's a whole thing. Gym quality jadeite is very rare. Even to this day, marketable jadeite in any notable quantity has only been found in Burma. Uh, here, let me see this real quick. Um... Other jadeite has been found in Guatemala, Russia, the US, and Japan, but not of any notable quality in any notable quantity. Moving on to the characteristics of jadeite, many people don't realize that it can come in an array of colors. Green. Lavender. Red. Ice. Oh, ice! I should have said ice. Yellow. <laughs> white and black. And gray. <laughs> Did we miss any? Green, lavender, ice, black, red, yellow, white, gray. We got it. And the main quality or value factor second to color for jadeite is actually translucency or transparency, which the higher translucent jade stones actually have that really gummy, glowy effect. Jadeite can range from opaque to highly translucent. 
Generally, higher translucency is higher value. The third quality factor to consider when making a jade purchase is texture. Texture refers to the consistency of color in the jade piece, as well as the smoothness, the physical texture of the jade itself, as jade is an aggregate material. Higher quality jadeite will have a smooth texture with no undercutting or internal fractures. Jadeite is also fairly hard, which is resistance to scratching, and it rates at a six and a half to seven on the Mohs scale of hardness. Toughness, which is not hardness, refers to the resistance to breaking in a stone, as opposed to hardness, which refers to resistance to scratching in a stone. The toughness of jadeite is categorically exceptional because it is one of the toughest gemstones on the planet. Next we're going to talk about treatments. A jade refers to natural and untreated jadeite jade. B jade refers to a treated jade that was acid bleached and has been filled with polymer or resin impregnation. C jade refers to jadeite that has been dyed and BC refers to jade that has been both dyed and polymer impregnated. Unfortunately, B jade is often sold and marketed as natural jade, which it is not. There are many reasons that a customer would not want B jade. In some cases, the acid used in the bleaching process can actually leak out of the stone onto the wearer's skin or clothing. B jade is also very brittle and breaks much easier than the exceptionally tough natural jade. In addition to this, if it is BC jade or C jade that has been dyed, that dye is not not permanent and can actually fade over time, changing the appearance of your jade. B jade is unfortunately often sold as natural jade by unscrupulous sellers, when in reality, B jade is only worth 5 to 10% the value of its natural or A jade counterpart. This is why it's very important to have a report or a guarantee confirming that the jade you purchased is natural and untreated. The presence of polymer or resin impregnation in B jade can only be confirmed by Raman or infrared spectrometer which the average jeweler or appraiser does not have. Therefore, the piece will have to be sent in to a trusted lab like GIA or somewhere like Mason K, a jade wholesaler who offers lab testing services. Now let's talk about jade simulants. Many green gemstones are erroneously called jade because jade is one of the most famous green stones. We actually already covered this in a previous video, which we're going to link to below. Jadeite simulants may include, but are not limited to, dyed green quartz, calcedony, soapstone, serpentine, adventurine, translucent, grossular, agana, and glass. Well, and jade is, in a lot of the U.S. market, jade's just not understood by tons and tons of jewelers. That's true. So you could just have somebody who comes through, they have a piece, they don't know much about it. They're like, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's jade. And then a jeweler buys it, they don't know, and they have no way to figure it out unless, of course, they send it to Mason K or GIA or yeah. some lab that can test and tell you what it is, then they're right. just operating with ignorance. If you have a customer that brings in jade, even if it tests on your refractometer as jade, you still should send it in. You should get it evaluate it properly to see if it's A jade or B jade. Well, yeah, because there are simulants that are worth a lot more than B jade. Natural untreated jadeite value can actually vary all across the board. There are inexpensive pieces of a jade, but there are also auction quality pieces of A jade that are selling for millions of dollars. There was actually a strand of jadeite beads that just sold in October of 2020 at Sotheby's for over 8 million. One of the highest valued jade necklaces was a strand of beads that sold for I think 26 or 27 million mm -hmm. a few years ago, also at an auction. So um, jadeite can be some of the most valuable jewelry. It, it can be so valuable, but that doesn't mean that it's not affordable or that you can't have some. So to clarify, a jade is not a grading of value. It refers to natural untreated jade. It is a designation for natural jade. If you really love jadeite, you can buy a piece for as low as 100 or 200 or $300. It just kind of depends on what you're looking for. A strand of beads like this, you know, this could sell depending on the quality, um, 400, 500, 600, somewhere in there. A strand of red jade beads, small like this, you know, you could probably get at a jewelry store for 14, 15, 1600 dollars, something like that. These jadeite beads that Hunter is wearing, they're natural, they're untreated. They would probably retail in a store for four or five thousand ish, depending on the quality. Um, depending on, the, again, the color, the translucency, the consistency, the texture, all of those factors. It's not unreasonable. If you're wanting to have a nice valuable piece for a few thousand dollars, you can find that. You can find inexpensive pieces in the hundreds. And if you want to spend tens of thousand dollars, if you're wanting an investment piece, a collector's item, um, an auction quality item, these are pieces that you can find, you can buy. Truly, it does vary in price and value all across the board. Talk to your local jeweler. <laughs> 
flower. He <laughs> jumped the gun on that. So, where do you buy jade? I'm so glad you asked. Talk, Talk to, to your, your local, local jeweler. jeweler. Seriously, go to your local jewelry store, ask them if they have jade. They may or they may not, but they can get it if they don't have it in stock. The reason you want to buy from a trustworthy jewelry source like your local brick and mortar jeweler is because so often jade on the market is treated and sold as untreated. It's very, very sketchy. So you want to go with a jeweler that you trust that you know is not going to do you wrong and they can get the jade from a supplier that offers a guarantee or at the very least your jeweler can actually send in the jade in question to a lab and have it authenticated. Which brings us to our next point, the importance of having a report or a cert or a guarantee for your jade purchase. A report from a trustworthy lab is going to tell you whether or not the piece you have is in fact jade and whether or not it is untreated or treated jade. Having a report is, in my opinion, very, very important. If the seller is unwilling to offer you some kind of guarantee or report, I would recommend walking because people who know Jade know that it is really commonly ripped off and it is really hard to tell if it's real or not. In fact, treatment, the particularly the polymer or resin impregnation, the BJ treatment in Jadeite is very difficult to detect. Your average jeweler or gemologist or appraiser is not going to have the technology to actually find that resin impregnation. So it has to be sent to a lab or a trusted dealer like Mason K who offers lab testing services to confirm that it does or doesn't have that resin impregnation. Because we did talk about value earlier. Even if you get the treated at half the price, you're still overpaying. A good rule of thumb when buying jade is that if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. If it seems like too good of a deal, it's probably treated jade or maybe a jade simulant. Natural untreated jade, it is rare and it is valuable. And a lot of natural A jade pieces are one of a kind. So expect to pay a fair price for the jade. If the seller is wanting to offer you a good deal for what they say is untreated jade, but they're not willing to offer you a report or a guarantee, that is very, very alarming. And some of the stuff we saw, they were referring to it online as natural jade. Yeah. They weren't, they weren't necessarily even using A, B, or True. untreated. They were True. using the term natural jade, mm -hmm. which it's not. Treated jade is not natural jade mm -mm. because it's got other things in it yeah. that aren't natural. Yeah. A lot of unscrupulous sellers are marketing their treated jade as natural. This is incorrect. It's untrustworthy. So get a report. Get a report. Having that guarantee is everything. Do you already have jade and you want to know if it's real? It has to be tested with a very specific type of gemological equipment called a spectrometer, whether it's a Ramon spectrometer or an infrared spectrometer. These are not equipment pieces that your average jeweler or appraiser is going to have. Your jade will need to be sent in, most likely, to either a grading lab like GIA or a trusted wholesaler such as Mason K who offers lab testing services. Mason K actually has an infrared spectrometer so they can with absolute certainty confirm if your piece of jade has been impregnated with polymer or resin or if it is natural and untreated. So there you have it. Jade is great. Get a report. Do you want to say some yeah. stuff you like about it? What makes jade like how much you love jade? Nah, How, like, they don't, they don't even is... know. It's too personal. Oh, okay. We've talked about that before. Oh, okay. Jade is a beautiful, gorgeous, gummy, exotic stone with a rich history. It has a mind-blowing appearance. I mean, it literally looks like it's glowing, you know, in those higher quality pieces. It's mesmerizing. It's tough. It's durable. It's going to last for generations. It is one of the best stones that you could have, especially to wear every day and to pass down to your kids and their kids and eventually their kids. If you have any questions about Jade, please feel free to reach out to us. You can leave us a comment. You can DM us on Instagram. You can also reach out directly to Mason K. Jade, the United States leading Jade supplier specializing in only natural and untreated Jadeite Jade. They are a wealth of information which you can find on their website. You can reach out to them directly. They'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have. And they also offer lab services. So if you have Jade that needs to be tested, you can send it directly to them. Thank you so much for joining us today. We hope we answered all your questions about Jade, but if not, leave them in the comments. <laughs> Don't forget to like this video if it helped you subscribe to our channel and follow us on Instagram at Jewels of the Trade. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.